Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I'm about to get started on a 30 minute soul journey session. And this client I've done work with before, and this is the first time we're sharing on YouTube. I'm really excited. And I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals and then I'm gonna get started. Okay, so it says, thank you Abby for the Ananda ceremony. This brings you back into a heart of divine mother or mother of all that is alive and holy. I feel like all my identities are melting in her. I did a couple of very beautiful ceremonies with her. She revealed to me her wholeness, that there is no difference between Mother Earth, Mother Sky, or any expression of divine feminine, like a lotus with a thousand petals, all is one flower. But I am two of this flower. But in both of these ceremonies, I couldn't embrace her completely without reservations. Some memories and unaccepted or unforgiving aspects of me are still persisting. So please, Abby, help me to embrace divine feminine in her wholeness. That is so beautiful. All right. P.S. I feel myself surrounded by spirits of nature or Mother Earth, even if I'm not in the woods or in nature. And when I was sitting in meditation in the woods... Then birds and animals are coming to stay around me, and a few days ago, a fox sat down a few feet from me, and then I realized that we had created ourselves to live in such a harmonious relationship with the planet and each other, and we must heal ourselves back into that state. Yeah, that's powerful. Hmm. All right, I'm going to go ahead and relax here. Hmm. This is going to be really special. Okay. So let me just tap into this one part of what you said because this is the vulnerable the vulnerable aspect. Some memories and unexpected or unforgiving aspects of me are still persisting. So please help me to embrace divine feminine in her wholeness. That's really important. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Okay. Okay. I definitely feel resistance. There's no doubt about it. You're there, but what is this energy I'm walking into? It's... Hmm. I could definitely draw this shape. So let's just say it's a flower petal, but it's going vertically up it kind of creates the look of a doorway kind of like a triangle part on top and then the rectangular side so it's like a door in that shape but it's a little bit softer more like a, a flower petal that's had a little bit of damage around the edges it's a bit of a, a orangish brown color but on the lighter end and i'm looking at this and the energy actually bows out towards me and in the center of this strange door, which it doesn't necessarily feel like a door, does it not feel like a door, there's a, a little bit of a slit in it, in the center. Just a little bit of a slit. So I'm looking at this here. It's a pretty big deal. As I'm looking at this, the image is starting to shift slightly, so I'm not looking straight ahead anymore, I'm more like a bumblebee kind of looking from above down at a very strange flower. This isn't a lotus, and if it is, it's quite damaged, and it's white, but there's some petals that are like browned, browned around the edge, uh, and some of the petals are, some of them aren't, some of them seem smaller than others, it seems a very unhealthy flower. And I feel the mother energy longs to nurture this flower, and this flower is you. And the bumblebee comes as a gift from the Divine Mother to help rehabilitate, to help heal, to help heal you 
And this bumblebee is a bit special and different. But what it does, it just seems to be a bumblebee and it, it's still there, but it's turning the entire flower white. Almost as though a paintbrush had just painted over it all and it's just a flat white color. And the petals are still not perfect. They're not uh, equal around the whole um, circular inner part of the flower. And this flower is wavering between coming out of this struggle or going into a death experience. But the bumblebee never leaves the flower. The bumblebee never does. And then beyond the bumblebee, I feel the mother energy ever watchful of this flower. This is very important. Let me see if I can experience what it is to be the flower. And I want to kind of go back to the original image that was slightly like a doorway. There's something important about these two. I want to make sure when I become you, the flower, I want to make sure that you are fully aware of how loved you are and how taken care of you are and how these insects and animal beings are gifts from the mother energy to support you in the healing process so that you can overcome this suffering that you are the wounds that are preventing you from the full and full embrace of that energy there's just such a delicateness to the conversation even speaking, I feel like I could uh, harm one of the petals. There's just such a very delicate feeling about the energy. I need to, I need to strengthen it because I shouldn't feel so delicate. It's not like I'm walking on eggshells or walking on glass here, but it's, it's just, have you ever met somebody that you feel is quite fragile and that if you where you could overwhelm them if you say something a little bit incorrectly and it might be too much. This doesn't say that you're fragile. It just says that this part of you that is longing to receive, to feel the nurture and the oneness is quite delicate. This part of you is, has a fragility, fragileness. <laughs> so let me uh, continue to examine here. I don't want the, I don't want this, fragile feeling to linger because you should feel strong you should feel strong I'm staying with you again a delicateness and caution I'm almost through this energy, just so you know. And on the other side is going to be something quite special. I'm just supportive. I'm sending love. I'm helping this flower aspect to see what I see, to feel what I'm feeling, to understand based on my interpretation itself, and to understand the bumblebee and the mother energy, to understand the doorway that I saw, to understand that all of this is a part of you. All of this is a part of you and to really absorb that awareness in as the greatest gift this universe could possibly give. It's not a vulnerability to embrace this love which you are already a part of. But some part of you says, am I a part of it? And if I am a part of it already, then why... Do I feel so fragile? Why do I struggle to have strength in that truth? That I'm already a part of all of this love. This flower is actually starting to wilt and it's losing its strength. And I will say this is a positive event. And it is weakening in all aspects of itself. Even the stem feels like uh, the flower is going to wither into the ground soon. This is important because this flower has completed its experience. 
So oftentimes we don't think of death as actually a reflection that the soul hasn't completed their experience. Because sometimes we don't want to die, right? <laughs> I don't feel like, in my human mind, I don't feel like I did everything I really wanted to do. You actually have died, or the death experience is a reflection of you literally did do everything that you needed to do in this lifetime. You did it! Yay! No matter how it looks like it ended, you actually did everything that your soul wanted to do in this lifetime as that part of yourself. So this flower did everything that it spirit was intended to do to experience in this lifetime <laughs> and now it is going into a death experience because its role is complete and in this death it feeds the earth with all of its memories all of its essence all of its experiences and it's very precious a pre very precious gift so you my friend as a reflection of this flower, are already giving of yourself to the earth. It's pretty cool. So imagine you are you, the human. Now imagine you are also you, this flower that you didn't even know that you were. And simultaneously, while you are human and you are this flower, the flower part of you gave a gift, a sacrifice of its own life into the earth and the earth absorbed it and cherished it and now somehow there's going to be a remerging with your energy field and a new life breathed within you is what this is like so let me see what happens this is very special by the way it's a delicate energy but it's like a precious energy too it's like i don't want to hurt the little baby you know <laughs> there's a preciousness there's a gen gentleness that's necessary. Um, I don't feel sorry for the flower, but I do care about this flower and I do want to help see it through. Um, and the energy still lingers and it's quite sweet. It's very kind. It's a very kind energy, delicate. It's not a hurtful, delicate, like... I feel overwhelmed by the situation, but I'm actually kind of happy to participate in being more delicate to help. Hmm. Um, I see Mother Earth, and this is an interesting image, but it's like a computer going do 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 as it's absorbing all of this flower essence. And so do 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 and that's what it's doing right now. It's uh processing. Hmm. It's making all kinds of noises. Hmm. And there's a joy in this process. A liveliness and happiness, but there's also a silence, believe it or not. Because while we're being distracted by the do 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 doos there's a, an event taking place on the other side of the distraction. And it comes through in a perfect silence. And it's creeping up in a very good way. Something is happening right under your nose. There are very, a lot of mothers here, mother energies here. This is another important part of this message. As you indicated, the lotus with the thousand petals is still one flower. And I do see what would be like thousands of mothers, mother emanations here. And this is interesting because I was thinking about this earlier today, about how wonderful it is to connect with Mother Mary. Absolutely delightful to connect with Mother Mary. But then I was like, but what about Kuan Yin? Because if you connect with Kuan Yin, you're going to freak out how awesome she is. <laughs> and then you think about, well, what about Aphrodite? Because if you I connect with Aphrodite, she's totally different frequency of what love can be. And then Isis and then all these, there's so many amazing women emanations, so many awesome women emanations, and they all have totally different vibrational emanations of their own consciousness versions of love as they express it. So you could meet somebody who loves with humor um, loves with lots of hugging and snuggling, um, loves with uh, a groundedness, seriousness, loves with, there's so many different types of love out there. And it's like you're saying, Mother Mary is, is one of the petals, Mary Magdalene, um, Isis, uh, um, Kuan Yin, 
all part of the one flower, but absolutely riveting, unique and individual versions of love. Total mother emanations as well, divine feminine emanations. And they're all standing here. And I see this happening. And all the while, they are representing the one mother. So they're all here as individuals, like we are all here as individual humans, but we are all representing um, what you could say as uh, the one, the one God, uh, the one mother, divine mother and father of all. And we're here representing the many petals of that extraordinary one flower. And, and so here we have all the, the mother emanations, but I still feel the mother, them all as a reflection of the one mother as well. Super beautiful. How could you have, like, how could one mother be so amazing? It's all the best mothers, you know, <laughs> but it feels this way. It's like, oh, I could delight in so many versions of mothers. It's so wonderful. It's like so much love in here. It's good. It's great. But what you need to know is that you, you're worthy and deserving of this, which you do know. But what is the part of you that, that, that feels that it is not, that feels afraid to receive that type of love? What is the part of you? I see a boy, a small boy, let's say two years old, very young. And he's uh, busying himself in a sandbox. And all these mothers are standing, surrounding him. And he's sort of, he knows that they're all here, but he's kind of ignoring. And he's just focusing on the sandbox and moving sand around and doing things with sand. And as they get a little bit closer, he continues to just keep doing things with sand and not look up, not notice. Because if he doesn't acknowledge them, then they're not really there. <laughs> But yet he knows they're there. How long before he will know that it is safe to just simply look up to see all of their smiling faces? But unfortunately for this boy, he f he's afraid that if he looks up, he might not see that they are smiling. He might see that they are frowning and that he has done something wrong without having an understanding of what he could have done to hurt his own divine mother. What have I done to hurt you, this two-year-old boy? What have I done to hurt you? And it comes from an instinctive love, a love for the mother, but a fear of having hurt the mother for reasons unknown to the two-year-old boy. So he can't look up because he's absolutely afraid that all these mothers will be scolding him, will be punishing him for reasons he doesn't know. I mean, this keeps going around and around in a circle. Hey, I'm afraid I did something wrong and I don't know what it is. And if I look up and they're frowning, then I don't know if I could stand it. I don't know if I could tolerate it. So I'm just going to do the sand in the sandbox and I'm just going to just not look up because I just don't know if I could bear it. If they were frowning at me, it would break my heart. It's pretty powerful. So I walk towards the boy and I touch him on the shoulder. And I absorb into him like the sun absorbs into the flower. And I emanate love and light from within him. And I tell him he couldn't be more beautiful than the way he is right now. And I want him to, I want you to believe in yourself that you are beautiful, that you are, that your will and desire to honor the Divine Mother is known by the entire universe. Even if in this human world it can be translated in other ways. This two-year-old boy does not need to carry this type of burden. <sighs> I'm just continuing to emanate this, this love and nurture and continuing to show him, show him what a good boy he is. But I don't like to use the words, you are a good boy. I like to use the words, 
but your truth is known in the universe. The way that you feel in your heart that you are afraid to look up to see them frowning is because you love the mother that much that you do not want to hurt her. And that alone says I love you to every mother in the entire universe. So please don't carry the fear because the fact that you love the mother this much that you are afraid of hurting that delicate flower that is the Divine Mother, that says I love you. The fear is based on loving the mother so much that if you were to tarnish a single petal, it would devastate you. This is a major program in your energy field that we're going to reverse it, okay? Oh, yeah, turn it inside out. That way you can actually feel in your energy field that your love for the Divine Mother is felt by all mothers, even if you are an imperfect man, so to speak. Like an imperfect we're always going to be learning how to love better than we have ever known how to love before. And all we can do is love as best as we understand how. And the more genuine that we are in connection with that love, couldn't that be good enough? Couldn't that be enough love that it could be genuinely appreciated? So I'm helping your energy field to know that your love is enough. And when you feel that your love is enough, you'll actually open up to receiving love in return. It's interesting because if we feel like we've hurt somebody, sometimes, and, and that was not our intention at all, sometimes we want to rectify it right away or sometimes we don't know how to. And we don't know how to, to um, translate their emotions. We don't know how to work with that. And it could be something over a long period of time. But we could withdraw even. We could find ourselves withdrawing. Um, instead of opening up to heal, we kind of close off and withdraw. And, and then we just hold tight onto the wound and hope that it heals over time. Um, but this here is helping your energy field to know how loved you are so that you can now know it is safe to let that love in, to be rewarded in a way, appreciated for the love that you have to share. You need to, you need to know that your love is enough and part of you sees the mother emanation as so much bigger than yourself that you, you will never be enough for it. But that's not true because you're already a part of it, right? You already are a part of it. So you already are enough for it. You've always been enough for it. It's all the human comprehension getting involved here. All right, let me keep working on this. Okay, there's like a, like a, like a, like a holding, um, a sadness, kind of a withdrawal, like a um, hiding, um, hands and oh, it's just sort of like a like I need to be held and, but I it's like a like a grief, like a, a like an intolerable grief so far down inside you wouldn't be able to put your finger on where that grief is actually coming from, and it's almost like. Um, being lonely for far too long that the only person to hold you is yourself. Um, but this feeling is coming from the longing to be embraced by the divine feminine energy in such a deep way that you, you feel the nurture of it and you don't need anything more than that. This is a very deep thing within you. This is a very deep thing within you. I'm going to go through this doorway. I feel like there this thing is this is this is a doorway. I mean, it doesn't necessarily say it's a doorway, but I'm going to it looks like a door. I'm going to just define it as a door and see what happens here. I, so I touch it and I start to see this uh, slit in the center is uh, and I and I when I touch it it becomes two golden doors, like French doors and you can open it. Is this a cupboard? I was just sort of opening it and I thought I would be walking through a 
pathway and it's more like a cupboard like a like a like a tiny cute little thing you hang on the wall and then you would have some little knickknacks or something inside this little wooden thing but it's golden and there's nothing in it it's empty i don't even know what to make of this i decide to take the the flower the flower before it turns pure white, before the bumblebee comes, and I just set it on one of the um, shelves inside. It's not a very, very large thing. Then I close this. Okay. I'm getting a really meaningful echo here. And there's a book that I never read, but I, I have a, a very minute recollection of the story, and it was like the Indian in the cupboard. And, it's, and what I remember, if this is correct, the boy had an Indian toy. And if you put it in the cupboard and close the cupboard and then you open it, the toy would come to life. And that was the Indian in the cupboard. And so I see the flower. I set the, the wilting, this sort of damaged flower in here. And I close the doors. And I feel like when I open them, the flower will be reborn. It will be coming back to life. Let's see what happens. And the mother says that is correct. But do you believe, do you believe it could be this easy? Do you believe that, that the damaged parts of you could just be simply placed into a golden cabinet and the doors closed for just a moment and then opened and then you are reborn? Do you think it could be this easy? Or do you feel there is more to this process? More. There's something, there's, there's, so there's more to be said about this. Okay. This is very complex. I see that in your frequency waves of your mind, um, a part of you is asking the universe for an experience to come into your life where you can actually learn as a, as a human being, as a man, to learn how um, to work with the Divine Mother with, with another human being, okay? So, for instance, uh, a woman comes into your life and there's something about her caliber that teaches you certain aspects that heal the deep, deeper parts of yourself that you cannot heal by yourself. There's only so much healing we can do for ourselves. We live in a world full of billions of people. When are we going to start working with each other in order to heal our deepest wounds? So it's, a, it's as if you've reached a point, which is kind of cool to say, where you don't have to keep doing all this healing for yourself. What you need to do is, is open the door, door for a divine feminine energy and it feels like a woman um, and it doesn't have to be right uh, but to come into your life to to teach you a few things and this could be more than one woman but it feels like one woman I'm doing that for you I'm actually going to do that for you so I'm I am you and you are the golden cupboard and we are opening the cupboard doors, not for broken things or things to come in to heal, but it's now the doorway that I thought it would be, <laughs> not a cupboard. It's actually an open door. And for a reflection of the lotus flower to enter into that doorway that can help you to heal these very deep aspects of yourself so you can truly glow with this inner light that you so desire to have. I can't think of anything more beautiful than to ask of the universe. You know, that's like super beautiful. So I, I am you, you are me, and we are the golden doorways. And we are opening it up to receive the lotus flower to come. And this is also a reflection of your heart, the golden doorways of your heart. And it does pair up with this shelf again because um, it's about bringing you back to life. It's about bringing you back to life as well. I 
imagine if this woman enters into the, the golden doorways of your heart to bring you back to life as though you are already the Indian in the cupboard, but through this energy, you become alive. You become alive now. It's like a key that unlocks the deepest parts of your soul. And it comes from the woman. It comes from the divine feminine. This is interesting. Very interesting. <sighs> okay, you are extremely open to what I'm talking about. And it is the greatest blessing of the mother to honor you with this gift. And it's as if she's sending all of these animals to come near to you, not just for awareness on a wisdom level, but to comfort you. And their messages from the mother to say, I, this is my way of nurturing you, of helping you, of being there with you. It's really beautiful. Okay, sadness is coming out. And it comes from a place of weakness, but not a... It's actually beautiful weakness. So, the sadness is coming out of this deep, 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 deep place. And there's a weak, beautiful weakness in here that just it needs this touch. It needs this energy. And it strengthens you from at, in your core. It, it strengthens you in the depths of your core, in your depths of your soul. It's pretty amazing when you're a human being who is living your life from already from the depths. So for me to accomplish this gift for you, it has to be accomplished within the depths of you. So that says a lot about you. That's really special. <sighs> this is totally opening up your world. And I see that there was sort of like some shades, um, dark. <sighs> they... they they're not light out there um there's certain type of curtain and no light will penetrate this curtain zero light will penetrate this curtain and i see all these curtains are are closed are down are shut and and it's a dark room with all these closed curtains and they're all starting to go up and to go out and to go away and all this light is starting to come in and you're starting to allow yourself to be seen and to feel that light and that warmth and that love and it's actually bringing you up to a very high place, very high place. You always were at that high place, but when all the curtains were closed, you weren't quite aware of how high you were. But now all this is opening up through this energy work and, and you're actually feeling outstanding. You're feeling amazing and you're way up there. You're way up there in the sunlight and the love of all. And this isn't just mother, it's also father. Um, and it's extremely balanced. And so if you could imagine the ultimate son as mother and father as one loving you together. It's so beautiful. And it's bringing you into balance too with both. <laughs> it's lovely. So, so lovely. <sighs> this I, I feel that this session is going to give you a new skip in your step something bright to look forward to something bright and warm within yourself that's going to bring out a new attitude but it's a uh, delightful it's like whistling and in, 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 because you feel that good <laughs> and you don't care what anybody else says you just need to whistle right now because you feel that good and it feels joyful it feels very joyful okay Thank you so much. This is so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. This is going to mean a lot to a lot of people. I think it's a beautiful time to do a session like this because 
I I just today did a ascension energy update. It was so long and it was hard to do it. It was 50 minutes long, but it was all about healing the male, female, and the earth. And it was very complex, very complex. So entering into these themes as well in your session, there's something about the divine time of all of this. There must be something in the universe that is calling for us to open up to these themes right now. And this is a really good time for you to receive this type of energy healing. So I'm so glad that I could do that today. All right. Thank you again so much. And for those of you watching it, if any of you are interested in connecting with me one-on-one -on -one for a psychic session, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I hope you all have a great day.